Good morning, everyone. Today is the joyous day of Lagba Omer. And what is the joy of Lagba Omer? So there are two great rabbis that are celebrated today, or stories related to two great rabbis. The question is, what's the connection between these two great rabbis, and what's the common theme of this holiday called Lagba Omer? And why is it so important that we need to celebrate it? So the first story is the story of Rabbi Akiva, the great sage Rabbi Akiva. He started learning Torah at the age of 20, 40, became one of the greatest sages in Israel. Tragically, he was killed by the Romans. But uh, rabbis tell us that he had 24,000 students who died on the first 32 days of the Omer. And today, the plague stopped, and the students of Akiva stopped dying. And the Talmud says, why did the students of Akiva die? The Talmud says, Shalom covers up his head. They didn't have proper respect for one another. What's the second story? The second story is the story of Shimon Bar Yochai, who passed away. His yard site is today on Lagba Omer. And he said that the day of my passing should be celebrated like a wedding. And indeed in Meron, a half a million Jews are dancing, danced the night away last night in celebration of his passing day. What's the story of Shimon Bar Yochai? He lived in the second century when the Romans uh, controlled Israel and forbade the study of Torah. He was teaching Torah, and, they were, and he spoke negatively about the Roman government as well. And so they were out, there was a warrant for his life. And so he and his son, Rabbi Laza, hid in a cave for 12 years. And here's the story. The Talmud says that when he came out of the cave after 12 years, he saw people in the field plowing their fields. And he said, look at these people. They're abandoning eternal life for transient temporal life. They're oskim b'chayi show, which is agriculture, instead of studying Torah. And he was so incensed, he was so angry at these people. How could they not study Torah? Because he was such on a, such a high spiritual plane. And the Talmud says, wherever he looked, his eyes burnt everything up. And God said to him, is that why you came out of the cave? Go back into the cave. So the Talmud says he went back into the cave for another year. And this time when he came out, his son, Rebbe Lazar, would look negatively at people occupied in mundane worldly affairs and destroy things. But wherever his son, Rebbe Lazar, looked and burnt and destroyed with his eyes, it's like a superpower, right? Rebbe Shem Yachai healed it. He, he, he restored it. And then the punchline of the story is that one day they're walking and they see a man running on Friday afternoon with two myrtle branches. And Rebbe Shem Yachai says to him, where are you going with those myrtle branches? He says, I'm taking it home. The covered Shabbos, in honor of Shabbos. So Rabbi Shem Yachai says, why do you have two? Why not one? In those days, a myrtle branch was like a bouquet of flowers. So you see a man with two bouquets of flowers. What's wrong with one? People go home with a bouquet of flowers for Shabbos, but why two bouquets? And what did the Jews say? Because the Torah says, Zachar at Yom Shabbos and Shamar. Remember and guard the day of Shabbos. So I take two myrtle branches. Two bouquets of flowers, one in honor of Zacha, one in honor of Shamar. Rav Shem Yechai heard this, he said, wow, look how precious the mitzvahs are for the Jewish people, that a Jew takes home two myrtle branches, one for remembering the day of Shabbos, one for guarding the day of Shabbos. And what do we see in this story? We see a transition. At first, Rav Shem Yechai came out, he was on such a high spiritual level that he condemned anyone who wasn't on his spiritual plane. If you're not studying Torah all day like I am, you deserve to be destroyed with the fire of my eyes. And God sent him back into the cave. Don't judge people negatively. Now he came back. His son would destroy with his eyes and he would repair. He was tolerant of other people. But the ultimate level was when he not only had tolerance and acceptance of other people, but he began to see that, you know what? There's a lot of good in other people. I should not only be tolerant and accepting of them begrudgingly, reluctantly, but on the contrary, look at their I didn't realize that these Jews may be ordinary Jews working their fields, but when it comes Shabbos, they take home two flowers, two myrtles, one for Zachar, one Shabbos. Look how precious the mitzvahs are. And that's the same message of the story of Yekiva. Why does Yekiva die? They didn't have respect for one another. Why don't you have respect for someone else? Because you think they're not doing things the way you should do it. But the whole message of the story of Shemir Kai, someone may be doing things differently than you, but there's a lot of beauty and good in what they're doing. I think it was Audrey Hepburn who once said, the beautiful eyes are when you see the good in people. Beautiful, when someone has beautiful lips, it means you speak kindly about other people. And walking with poise means you walk with the knowledge that you're never alone. God is always with you. That's the greatest compliment that someone has nice eyes or nice lips, but they can see the good and speak good about one another. And that's the message of both the story of Yekiva and of Shimon Bar Yechai. It's a story told by Rabbi Levine. Rabbi Levine was known as the Tzaddik of Yerushalayim and lived during the 
pretty man that he was a tzaddik, never loved compassion. But the story told it that he was walking down the street one day and he see one of his former students walking towards him. So he got excited, he's going to see his student. Suddenly the student noticed the rabbi, he crossed the street. So Rabbi Ari Levine crossed over and ran after him. And he said, uh, Chaim, how you doing? Uh, what's going on? Started talking to this former student. And then he said to him, why did you cross the street when you saw me coming? So the student said, I'm embarrassed because I'm no longer religious. And I wasn't wearing a I was embarrassed that my Rebbe should see me without a yarmulke. And Rabbi Levine looked up at this tall, handsome student. And he says, don't you know, I'm a very short old man. I can't see what's on your head. I can only see what's in your heart. And that's the message of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, to see the good in one another. And that's what we celebrate today because the joy of Lag Ba'om is when we can see positive in one another, not just to tolerate each other, but to actually celebrate one another.